Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, I have a lesson for you on terminating and repeating decimals. Our objectives today are that you will write terminating decimals as fractions and that you will write repeating decimals as fractions. Here's the question I want you thinking about as we go through the lesson today. How are terminating and repeating decimals different? So let's begin. We're going to talk about terminating decimals first. By definition, a terminating decimal is a decimal that ends and has a specific number of digits. So 0 0.7 or 7 tenths, we have 0 0.35, which is read or spoken mathematically as 35 hundredths, and 0 0.214 or 214 thousandths. Now, what makes these terminating decimals unique is we can write them as fractions. So as you speak it mathematically is how you write it as a fraction. So this is written as seven tenths. One decimal point, one digit is to the tenths. This is the tenths digit, so seven tenths. So as you say this decimal mathematically is how you write it as a fraction. And seven tenths is in simplest form. Let's look at the next one. 35 hundredths is written 35 over 100. Now we can simplify this. Both numerator and denominator are divisible by 5. And when we divide by 5, we get 7 twentieths. So 35 hundredths as a decimal in simplest form is 7 twentieths as a fraction. 0 0.214 or 214 thousandths, both are divisible by 2. They're both even, divide by 2, and you get 107 five hundredths. So 214 thousandths as a decimal in simplest form as a fraction. Something to note here that will become important later on in our playlist, terminating decimals are rational numbers. I want you to focus on the fact that we're saying they're rational numbers, and part of the word rational is ratio. All terminating decimals can be written as fractions, and a fraction is a ratio of a part to a whole. So we see the word ratio in rational numbers, which means if it's a rational number, you need to be able to express it as a ratio. And we can do that with terminating decimals when we write them as a fraction. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video here, and the instructions are to write the decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So this is read mathematically as 13 thousandths. We have three decimal places. So when we look at our decimal, we know that our first digit is our tenths. Our second digit is our hundredths. And our third digit is our thousandths. So if I only had one number here, I would take that value and place it over 10. If I have two digits, I'm going to place it over 100. And if I have three digits, I'm going to place it over 1,000. So a zero for each digit. So this is going to be written as a fraction as 13 one thousandths. And that is in simplest form because 13 is prime. Here's another one I'd like you to try. Go ahead and write this decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Pause the video now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So this one we have a whole. So let's look at our, dig our place values. Our first digit is the ones digit. That's going to be our whole number next to our fraction when we write this mixed number. And then we still have our tenths column digit and our seventh is in the hundredths so because I have two digits, we're going to write this part of the decimal over 100. So let's go back and do what our work is. So we know we're going to have our whole number one and seven hundredths. And that's how you would read it, one and seven hundredths. And it's in simplest form because seven is prime. Now let's talk about repeating decimals. Repeating decimal is a decimal that does not end and it has a specific number of digits that repeat. So here's an example. 0 0.5555 and these three dots tell you that it extends infinitely and the fives just keep going on, it never ends. We could also write this 
as 0 0.5 with the repeating symbol on top. And just a little bit of trivia, that repeating sign is called a vinculum. And vinculum is a Latin word for chain. And in math, the horizontal line above that number represents a non-terminating repeating pattern. That repeating bar could be above one digit, two digits, three digits. It can be above 10 digits if it, if it was necessary. In this case, it's only above the five, meaning that the five is going to continue to repeat infinitely. So a little bit of trivia. Now let's look at repeating decimals closer. So we're going to write repeating decimal as a fraction. A repeating decimal, 0 0.5 repeating. Here's our vinculum, our repeating bar. We also have 0 0.41 repeating, so our 41 repeat, so this would be 0 0.4141 and we have 0 0.338, so now we have three digits that repeat. So this would be written 338, 338, 338, infinitely. Now let me show you a pattern before I show you mathematically how we can write this as a ratio or as a fraction. So there's a pattern here. When one digit repeats, as long as it starts, the repeating pattern starts immediately after the decimal point. We'll talk about later in the video what happens when it doesn't. We have a pattern. It is the repeating digit over 9. So 0 0.5 repeating is equivalent to 5 ninths. If you don't believe me, check it on your calculator. 5 divided by 9. When we have two digits that repeat, and they repeat immediately after the decimal point. There's no digit here that isn't under the vinculum. We have 41 over 99. So if I have two digits that repeat and the, they repeat immediately after the decimal point, our denominator is going to be 99 with that repeating pattern. Our third example, I wonder if you can guess. We have three digits that repeat. Even though the threes are the same number, it's still 338. Three, so it's 338, 338. Three, three, we need to have both threes as independent of each other. So three digits repeat, no number between the uh, decimal point and the vinculum starting, and it's going to be 338 over 999. So again, I challenge you to do these on your calculator. Five divided by nine, and you should get on your calculator 0.5 repeating, 41 divided by 99, you'll get 0 0.414141 repeating, and 338 divided by 999, you're going to get that pattern, 0 0.338338338. Now let's see how this magic really comes to life. First, I want you to note that repeating decimals are rational numbers, and here's why. We have that word ratio in rational numbers, and all repeating decimals can be written as a fraction, which is a ratio of a part to a whole. That makes them a rational number. Now let's prove the pattern. We're going to write this decimal as a fraction in simplest form, and I'm going to prove to you why that pattern works. So I'm going to say let x equal my repeating decimal. Now we've learned when we solve equations that we can do whatever we want algebraically to both sides of the equation as long as we do the same thing to each side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So 10 times x is 10x, and 10 times 0 0.7 will make that decimal point move one space to the right. So if I move this decimal point one space to the right, it becomes 7.7 .7 repeating. And here it is, 7.7 .7 repeating. Now I'm going to do a little trick where I'm going to subtract my original equation from my new one. So 10x minus x is 9x, and when I subtract 7.7 .7 repeating from 0 0.7 repeating, my 0.7 repeatings are subtracted one from the other, leaving me just 7. So I'm going to have 9x equals 7. Now to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 9, and I get a solution that x is equal to 7 ninths. And there's your proof. 7.7 .7 repeating is 7 over 9 written as a fraction, which makes it a rational number because this is a ratio of part to whole. Again, try it on your calculator, 7 divided by 9. Let's try another one. Here's how you would do it if you have two digits that repeat. So I'm going to let x equal my repeating decimal. But because two digits repeat, instead of multiplying by 10, 
I'm going to multiply each side by 100 because I need to remove to move this entire repeating pattern to the left of the decimal point. So when I move this, I move it to the right of the repeating pattern, and then that repeating pattern continues to the right of the decimal place. So multiply by 100, it moves your decimal point two spaces to the right, and I get 73.73 .73 repeating. So now we're going to subtract the equation from the new equation. That's going to, when I subtract, my repeating digits go away, the one subtracted from the other, and I'm going to get 100x minus x is 99x, which equals 73. Now we're going to divide 99 from each side to solve for x, and I get what our pattern showed us, x equals 73 99ths. And there you have your repeating decimal written as a fraction. Let's try one more. I have 3.4 repeating. So now we have a whole number here. So what we know when we write a decimal as a fraction is we're going to keep that whole number, the one in the ones digit. So we're going to focus on finding out the ratio of the 0.4 repeating. So we're going to take our 3 and we're going to keep it and we're going to figure out what 0.4 repeating is as a decimal. And we know that x equals 0.4 repeating. We're going to multiply both sides by 10 because I only have one digit that repeats. When I subtract my repeating decimals, digits will go away, one subtracted from the other. 10x minus x is 9x, which equals 4. Divide each side by 9, and I get a fraction of 4 ninths, and I'm going to bring that over to my whole. So 3 and 4 ninths is equivalent to 3.4 repeating. All right, here's the trick. This is as tricky as it gets, in my opinion. We have 6.0, and then our vinculum is over the two digits, 41. But the zero is not part of the repeating pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is identify this is our decimal, our fraction portion, and we need our whole number. So we're going to bring down the 6 so that we don't need to worry about that. And I'm going to let x equal my decimal portion, 0 0.41, and only the 41 repeats. Well, before my magic will work, I have to make sure that my decimal point is the first thing that next to the left of the repeating pattern. So to do that, I can rewrite that as 10x equals 0 0.41 repeating, because when I multiply both sides by 10, my decimal point goes one space to the right. So now I want to find my fraction. So now I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply it by 1,000 because I need to multiply it by each side by 100 because I have two digits that repeat. And 10 times 100 is 1,000. And when I multiply this by 100, I get my repeating digits to the left of the decimal point. So now when I subtract, my repeating digits, one subtracted from the other, leaves me 41 on the right side. 1,000 subtract 10 is 990x equals 41. And then we're going to divide both sides by 990. And we get 41 over 990, which becomes our fraction. So our mixed number that represents this repeating fract, uh, decimal is 6 and 41 over 990. Again, if you don't believe me, use your calculator. 41 divided by 990 plus 6. It works. Now it's your turn. I would like you to write this decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So I'm going to prove it algebraically. You may have used your magic pattern. X is going to equal my repeating decimal. I have two digits that repeat. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 100 so that I have one set of repeating digits to the left of the decimal point, And I'm going to subtract. And when I do the repeating digits, one is subtracted from the other leaving us 57 on the right, and 100x minus x is 99x. To solve for x, we're going to divide each side by 99, giving us a solution. Oh, we got to simplify. 57 divided by 3 and 99 divided by 3. Both numerator and denominator are divisible by 3, giving me in simplest form 19 33rds. So 0 0.57 repeating is equivalent to 19 over 33. 
Here's another one for you. Please pause the video now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going to note that these are our repeating digits and we're going to bring down our 11. So we know our whole part of our fraction when we write it as a mixed number is going to be 11. Now we need to write 0 0.09 repeating as a fraction. So we let x equal the repeating pattern. I have two digits that repeat. Don't let that zero fool you. If I wrote this without the vinculum, it would be 0 0.09090909. So the zero is significant. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 100 because I have two digits that repeat, which brings over my 0, 09. Now, zero is not significant when it was in the tens place. So it's be 0, 09, which is just 9. So now we're going to subtract, and when we subtract, our repeating digits are eliminated. 100x minus x is 99, and then we have 9 subtract 0 is 9. Divide each side by 99. This can be simplified by dividing both numerator, numerator and denominator by 9, giving me 1 11th. So 1 and 1 11th is equivalent to 11.090909 repeating forever. So again, try it on your calculator. 1 divided by 11, add 11. And there you have it. That's terminating and repeating decimals, the start of a new playlist at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll come back soon. And I hope you have a great day.